A lot of people in the UK have seen the pictures over the last weeks, months uh, of South Africa literally going up in flames, looting, rioting, uh, lawlessness in general. When uh, they look at those pictures uh, on the corporate mainstream or other media, uh, there's a shrug really because they've looked at South Africa since Mandela uh, and seen it going downhill, downhill, downhill. But uh, people who are time poor but really want to understand what's going on, they don't have the uh, capacity to work out the political problems there, the economic problems. Give us a whistleblow tour if you can of what's really going on and why we're seeing these riots and this looting what the uh, root problem of that is? Basically, our democracy came out at a stage where we thought that, uh, well, the government certainly thought that there wasn't any alternative, that we had to go down the hard road of capitalism and really we shouldn't be looking at expanding the state or housing, uh, education, transport and so on. There was a massive backlog. They, they, they started along that road and then they you know, were convinced by the likes of the World Bank and International Monetary Fund, um, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan and uh, all, all, all those others that really, that you can't redistribute without economic growth and therefore everything was put into economic growth. We had some economic growth at the end of the 90s, but it was a jobless growth. So unemployment continued to rise. And, and with it, the hardships, uh, you know, every worker has about, on average, 10 dependents. So the wage goes a lot uh, less than it did uh, 30, 40 years ago when we, you know, in the 70s, we had full employment. Um, and now we've got 42% uh, people unemployed, 74% of those are under 35. Massive amount of desperation and, and poverty. So. The, you know, the, the political kingdom uh, first and then, then all else follows really hasn't uh, worked out. The trickle-down theory of economics hasn't really uh, delivered. That, that is probably understatement of the year on this program. Uh, not only uh, is there no academic uh, research to support trickle-down, but when you do go down a Reaganomics route, neoliberal route, uh, Thatcherite route, what uh, you immediately get is rent-seeking capitalism. And that's really something that you have targeted really hard uh, in your uh, brilliant film, How to Steal a Country. Uh, pitch the film and tell us um, why you came to looking at a, a really uh, specific set of corporate interests um, that had captured uh, Jacob Zuma. Uh, how did you get there? Firstly, the it was the biggest story you know it was our panama leaks it, it was a massive uh, trove of information that proved what people were suspecting all along but didn't have the evidence the gupta leaks uh, a couple of newspapers online and special investigative reporting outfit got hold of these and started sifting through them and uh, that was the beginning of the end but it spoke to once the stories came out spoke quite clearly to me about something that's happening universal universally around the world where the separation between the public sphere of life our state and the private sphere the corporations is getting very blurred all these regulation agencies and so on made up of uh, state regulation agencies often made up of uh, private corporate players and that, this is happening everywhere in the world so the corruption uh, is becoming the new norm, unfortunately. And I want to, you can't do that on the scale it happened in South Africa without uh, the connivance of the likes of your uh, former Bell, uh, Lord Tim Bell, or Bell Pottinger, without the HSBC and the other big international banks that have been caught really with their fingers in the cookie jar.